I guess we're complete, yes. And that's really cool to see. Uh, this is something that we're, uh, that we're very happy about, um, that so many people are joining us, so many people um, are, are joining our graduates on their last steps to, into web development and studying as uh, developers uh, in, in the IT industry. Uh, welcome everyone, my name is Antje, I'm one of the co-founders of Upleveled. Uh, there is also the rest of the Upleveled team in this call. Uh, Matthias, you've talked to, Carl, you might have known before already, but uh, there's also Ines, uh, our developer and main engineer on the Fusion platform you used for registering for this event. And there's also Jose, who is uh, also a major uh, part for people's success uh, in, in becoming web developers. And yes, why are you here? What are you looking for? I hope you're looking to see uh, some really great developers who would love to uh, join your teams anytime soon. We have extremely talented people here and we, we have to start quickly because uh, we have 19 people presenting today. We'll be quick, we'll, it will be a fast ride and I will just share one or two words so that you know what to expect. Uh, so the Upleveled Coding Bootcamp is a full stack program that means it's super immersive. We go through front end, back end databases, uh, DevOps, uh, IT security, and all kinds of things that are super necessary to get people job ready. So that's our focus. It's very hands-on, it's very project focused. And most of the people that will be presenting today have not have any touch points with coding before this 12-week uh, program was starting. I want to point that out because I think it's super important to understand that if you, if you now experience today what these people have learned in the past three months only, you can just imagine what they'd be uh, able and capable of learning in the next three months, for example, on your team. So this is uh, this is really this is really important to understand. This is something we are really proud of that um, that the people here today have accomplished so much uh, with all of their projects. And this is the next thing that's important to understand. The project you will see today, everyone will present one project, is just one of many. So the final project is just the most complex one and the project that is um, self-chosen, not only when it comes to the idea of what's the content, what's the topic and so on, but also technology stack, uh, which, uh, which libraries to use, uh, which, uh, which frameworks to work with, where is it deployed, how is it deployed, what's the user journey, what's the design, all these things are decisions that our people came up with themselves. And uh, so what they present today is completely their own work uh, in the last part of our immersive program. I will quickly share my screen just to show you the, um, just to show you our tech stack so that you get an idea of what people have been through in the, in the past weeks. This is it, because this is something that we probably will not have time to share in detail. Um, so we focus on uh, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, obviously in the fundamentals and then work them through Next.js, uh, React, Node.js, all these technologies that are, um, that are super, super relevant today. But our approach in teaching, and some of you already know us and have hired from us before, know that uh, our people are super capable of just um, problem solving in general and getting into new technologies quickly. So this is really important to understand what they are are capable of doing today is just uh, like an example to show of what they are able to understand in a short period of time. But if you have a different uh, tech stack, it's definitely possible to uh, to teach these people, and they are and they have shown that they have the abilities to learn new technologies fast. Um, what's up next i will stop talking very soon because we have uh, we have a we have a tough schedule uh, so what to expect now there will be awesome 19 presentations of 19 very very individual people they will not be able to go into detail because they are given a a max uh, four minute slot to present themselves and their final projects. So if you think someone is a good fit for your team, check out their profiles on our Fusion platform. As of now, all the profiles are online. You can check them out now or later. They will be online after the presentation, obviously. And you can also get in touch with them using our Fusion platform. So if you want to have a conversation, if you want to reach out to people, please do that. They are all open to uh, to work and they're all open to have a conversation with you about what you need on your team, what are their strengths and what are they open for. 
Um, so without uh, further ado, we will actually uh, start and get into the first presentation now. First person is always taking one for the team. This time we had an involuntarily volunteering person, which is Matthias, who didn't really know he, he volunteered, but he did. And I'm very happy because, um, because that's, a, that's an amazing start. And I'm handing over the stage to you, Matthias. Thank you, Antje. Um, yeah, um, hello from my side. Um, happy to be here. And um, my name is Matthias. I'm based in Vienna. And uh, my background is uh, 14 years plus in strategy, sales, marketing, project management in different roles in corporates and startups. I would consider myself a creative and uh, problem solver, an analytical problem solver. And uh, a couple of years ago, I also co-founded uh, an education startup and also along the way mentored a couple of startups. Uh, and this is also where my passion then developed and manifested itself in innovation and tech. And I love connecting people. And also I'm all about minimalistic design, UX, UI. And uh, up the up-level bootcamp kind of gave me the, the chance to you know, bring this all together. And uh, this is why um, I'm looking for a new challenge also in um, yeah, product management, product ownership but also interface roles are super interesting for me. And um, I'm also happy to take up any freelancing and intern project work, but um, I'd love to uh, obviously present my project first. Um, the idea that uh, I came up with is a mindfulness and journaling app called Remind. Uh, this is the deployed version here, as you can see on the screenshot. Um, the journey was from idea to final project, obviously starting with a prototype, a clickable prototype in uh, Figma. Um, I used also some sketches beforehand and then uh, started plotting out the project in Notion mainly, but also in GitHub. And then uh, drew, drew the database uh, schema and draw SQL, and then obviously building the app with uh, Next.js uh, with the help of TypeScript, uh, databasing in PostgreSQL. And uh, for CSS, I used mainly Motion. Um, and then of course I put a lot of love into it. Um, hopefully you will be able to see that, but let's jump into it. Um, this is the app. And uh, for the sake of the demonstration, I already created a, a login. But obviously you can register uh, an account, which is uh, crucial if you want to make entries, but uh, let's log in here first. And uh, from the login screen, you will be directed to a so-called dashboard, which uh, will give you your entries and your profile, but let's create a profile, let's create an entry for today. So three questions. The first one would be, what would make today great? Let's put here, having a great time at the up-leveled uh, graduation event with my friends and guests, obviously, but also family. Then what are the th things that I'm grateful for today? Obviously being healthy in these times and uh, then enjoying the day with my up-leveled colleagues and team. And last but not least, finally kind of being able to call myself a web developer, which is a strange feeling, but it's a nice feeling, beautiful feeling. And the daily affirmation for today is this day is only the start for more good things to come or to happen. Yeah. Then I also implemented a random quote of the day API, which uh, kind of gives you um, shuffling of uh, different quotes. Let's uh, take this one and copy this to the clipboard and take it over, which uh, then gives me the chance to create my so-called tile, which I'll show you in a second. And this is my tile overview. So I can hover over them. This will be, this is adding the tile that I just created. And uh, I can have a short preview of what uh, this tile would look like, but I can also go into it and have a look at the details, which will then give me the chance to kind of review on a daily basis uh, through a period of time. I can also delete the tile, obviously, which we're not gonna do now, and I can log out. So very simple to use app. Um, this is Remind. I hope you liked it. And uh, yeah, open to talk with you and looking forward to it. Thank you very much for the, um, yeah, for the, yeah, you know, <laughs> giving it back to you. Thank you. Awesome, Matthias. Thank you so much for, for the, 
for the great presentation. That was really cool. And yeah, I've, since I wanted to start off quickly, I've completely forgot that obviously if you have some question, please post them in the chat. My colleagues will be happy to answer them or maybe I can answer them. Maybe sometimes we can even ha hand over a question to one of our graduates, but we need to be, we need to be quick. If there is a question unanswered, we will reply and address it after the session, reach out to you because we, we keep, we keep an eye on the, on the chat here. But now to go on, move on, we'll pass over to the internet or Mr. Felix Lang, it's your turn. Okay, thank you, Ante. So I'll just share the screen. Yeah, my name is Felix. I think you see my screen here. Oop. And um, I have a background in international photography and um, I wanted to continue with a creative project. So I made this. Um, what is this, are you probably asking? And it's quite easy. It is a 3D portfolio website for my friend, Andreas Körner, who friendly, uh, luckily provided me with all of this artwork you're going to see soon. And um, I had the idea of coming up with a sort of pageless page. So everything that this page will do is inside of this model. Besides of those instructions and the control settings and all of this. So you can, you have this main model here and you can look around, of course. You can um, zoom in, zoom out. You can even, if you press C, fly around it, if you are crazy. And um, there's also a second model which will come like this. I don't actually know exactly what this is. It's a sort of uh, rock shaped design from my architectural friend, but um, let's proceed with this because it's a sort of entrance design. And as you can see all of these little layers here, they're selectable and also clickable. So if you click any of those, it will prompt a little window where there should be a photo, but there isn't apparently, but yeah, that's not the problem. And all of these um, all of these photos here that were supposed to be here are also related to the project. Oh, there it is. So um, they will always prompt a new one. You can drag these around. You can um, have more, of course. You can have a second one and you can have a third one if it actually comes back now. Yeah, and um, if you want to have a clear screen, you can just scroll out and look at all of the stuff, read about the stuff. Of course, the idea is that this model once will be completely filled or will be the basis of a lot of different projects from the 3D area, because this is a space I really want to get into. It is not just um, very interesting to work with, but also luckily I have friends who do cool stuff. One feature I forgot is that you can change the texture of the model if you're really into that and look around it, looks even more. And this model here really like is predestinated for flying into it, right? So you can do that sort of like a video game. Yeah, this also prompts some, some models where you can look around, oops, misclicked, and um, read about it, what it is, what it does, and so on. And um, yeah, I think there is more stuff to come, more great stuff to come. With that, I go back to the studio, please. Love it. Um, what did you use? What did you? How did you? How did you implement the three D uh, art? Like, what did you use to get it in there? Um, this is done with uh, React three fiber, and um, I developed the models with my friend in order to make them work how I um, want to do it. Want to have it. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Very cool. Um, yeah, we'll just move over to the next awesome project. As you can see, we don't have much time here. It's, it's, it's just going to go fast and there's, there's so much cool stuff to come, like already two cool presentations, but it, we're, we're not, we're not going anywhere soon. We we'll just enjoy what's coming up next. And I'm really, really happy and really looking forward to Sarah's presentation next. Thank you, Antje. I will be sharing my screen. That didn't work. I'm sorry. Okay, that looks better. Um, so I will just jump in, assuming that all of you have home office experiences. If not before, then 
over the last one and a half years. And suddenly distractions are everywhere. At least that's how I feel. And I tried um, to solve that for myself. Um, and I built Mindful, which is a home office companion inspired by mindful and agile practices. But as I do, you can also call it a glorified task list. So before I jump in, let me just uh, share a few words about myself. My name is Sarah Faustmann. I already have uh, quite some job experience. I'm also just finishing up uh, my BSc in computer science. And um, this project was built using uh, mainly Next.js, uh, React, TypeScript, PostgreSQL, HTML, and CSS. So uh, let's just log in. I've already prepared. Or maybe I haven't. Oh, yes. Sorry, it was just a bit slow. Um, yes, uh, so this is my task list. The core uh, of the whole application is the task list here, which holds um, similar to a Scrum backlog, a personal log where you can enter all the tasks that you want to do. Um, and it has a day log where the current uh, tasks live. The app starts on the dashboard where you can see how much, how many tasks you have overall, how many open and how many are done. And it gives you the main actions that you can uh, use uh, in the app. So there is also profile settings uh, where I can enter times uh, during which I want to work. And also um, I can enter breaks and change my profile information, obviously. Yeah, and um, so let's assume that I want to start working on a day. I can just uh, work through my tasks, see uh, what I want to appoint to a particular day, and then I can hit the calendar button and it moves it down here to my day log. And when my task is done, I can simply save it and it will show up here and also in my dashboard. Well, so once I've defined the task that I want to do on a particular day, and this is where the mindfulness uh, and the agile part comes in, I come to this page, which uh, is my day page, and I can do um, a so-called warm up here, which is kind of like a sprint review where I can enter information um, about my last day, about what I want, what do I want to do today, and what are possible roadblocks that I might run into, and how can I solve them. I can adapt my settings for the specific day, and at the end of the day, I can do a wind down where I can also reflect on how my day went and what I want to do. Um, there's also an archives page and obviously a new tasks page. So um, these are the main functionalities. Uh, if you're interested, I would love to hear from you and thank you for your attention. Thank you so much, Sarah. I know it's it's super. It seems super tough to just cut people off and be like, "Hey, this is only four minutes." We we'd love to see more about the project. I know, I know, and you can see all of the projects in detail because all our people have GitHub profiles. All these projects are in repos on GitHub. You can check them out. You can talk to the people. You can get a walkthrough uh, through the projects and uh, and have a look at them uh, yourself. Obviously, also on the deployed versions. But since we have so many more cool projects to come we need to move on and the next one is actually related because uh, working from home is not only about your mental health but also about your physical health and this is exactly what Jakob uh, took care of so I'm handing over to Jakob. Thank you Antje. Uh, let me share my screen for a second. So I will start right away. Uh, Thank you for being here. Uh, it's a pleasure to talk to you. And 
I will just introduce myself real quick. My name is Jakub Dojdjak. I'm 31 years old, born in Vienna, Austria, but with a background, with a Polish background, hence the difficult to pronounce name. Uh, I was previously working in the event industry as a technical support mostly. Uh, I'm fluent in English, German and Polish, and my hobbies are mostly spending time outside, like traveling, hiking, and all kinds of sports, which leads me to my uh, final project. Just some quick information, contact information. Yeah, my final project, it is called Gym Time. It's a progressive web app built with Next.js. And uh, for the design, I use Tailwind CSS. For the backend database, I used PostgreSQL. I also uh, tested it with Cypress and deployed it on Heroku. I also spent some time before even beginning to work on the project with preparations, mostly using Figma and DrawSQL, because like one of the main uh, lessons I got from the bootcamp is that preparation can be really useful and help you a lot, make your life way easier. So yeah, that's for how I spent my time before working on the project. And yeah, and now let's get over to the project itself. Gym Time, uh, it's a workout planning app, a simple workout planning app. We will just sign up real quick. Uh, you have the possibility, so you have a full user authentication. Uh, when you sign up, you will be redirected to the uh, personal user page. You have, you can choose between various uh, workouts depending on your preferences on what you want to actually achieve. When you click on a workout, you have uh, different exercises. Uh, you have instructions. You can uh, click on a single exercise and then you will uh, see more details about it. You will have a, like a small GIF explaining to you with instructions and benefits, telling you uh, how to proceed. Uh, you also have the, the possibility to create your own workout. Uh, for that, you click on Add Exercises. Uh, you have a database with different workouts. You can choose from that. We'll add just uh, planks, for example, crunches, and some uh, jump squats. So you can add them. And when you click on My Workout, you will be redirected to your own personal workout. And you can start working out and preparing for the next summer. We still have some time left. I also uh, implemented a toggle to switch between light and dark mode. This is quite uh, popular nowadays. And yeah, that's, that's my uh, app. Thank you for your attention. Uh, enjoy the rest of the presentations and over to you, Antje. Can I, can I also point out how impressed I am by everyone's job to, to have an awesome presentation here? L like you're doing great guys. I'm so, I'm so, so proud. It's really cool to it. I'm, I'm really enjoying it currently. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Jakob also. Um, so, but we're, we're moving on. The next person just trying to, to find him here uh, is one of the few people not having one of these up level backgrounds. That's because this person is our certified leader expert and uh, and is working on from a Linux machine throughout the whole bootcamp already and um, I'd like to hand over to a very cool 90s inspired project by Ingo. Yeah, hello, so, thanks to Antje. My, my name is uh, Ingo, I'm from here from Vienna and I worked in uh, in logistics as an ind independent contractor lately but uh, let's uh, dive into my project. It, uh, I'm a fan of these uh, early 1890s uh, Stephen King movies. So I decided to make a fan page of, uh, about it. And uh, here you can see the, the landing page. And uh, yes, uh, it is, is deployed on Heroku. Uh, it uh, is an, a next uh, JS uh, desktop application and with a Postgres database. So the, the idea is you, you come to the page and uh, then uh, you want to know no, more about it. Uh, there's a, a short description. So it is obviously a page of, about Stephen King movies and uh, his books coming soon. 
Then uh, there's a sub page for, 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 for contact. Okay. That worked before. Uh, it took uh, some time. I'm sorry for that. Uh, here's a contact formula. Uh, the, the fun fact about this uh, is uh, this is the house of Stephen King. And, uh, but do not expect he, he's writing you back when you send a request here. Uh, so uh, I'm going back to, to the, the landing page. Uh, now I decided uh, I want to sign up. So, so uh, I go to register, put in my, my credentials. So, okay, it says uh, the, the user exists already, so the API prevents uh, uh, that that a second user can have the same uh, credentials and username. So I just have to log in. Let's do that. So now that I'm signed in, I, I have here my user icon, my username in, in, in the header and uh, I can go to the, the single movies. So uh, when I go to, to a single movie, uh, I can write comments. So uh, today at lunchtime, obviously there was already a user too here and wrote to this film, uh, what a nice movie. So uh, I can say, I agree with that or uh, not my cup of tea perhaps. Uh, post this, this, this opinion um, and, and, and uh, could delete it either. But, but, but uh, right now I want to say, uh, perhaps I change my, my mind afterwards and I say, uh, uh, instead of uh, not my cup of tea, more tea please to this movie to give, to give a, a short uh, feedback and update just my, my comment from before. Uh, yes, uh, that's... <coughs> mostly part of the functionality right now. It would be nice to have a, a, a rating uh, to the movies too, but time was not on my side. I enjoyed uh, during the boot camp uh, every aspect of, 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 of web development, uh, beginning from front end to back end. And lately uh, also uh, found out that uh, testing could be an option, uh, especially a quality assurance for me. And uh, as Antje already told, I'm a certified Linux system administrator. And if it has some Linux background to do with Linux, it would be a nice uh, feature for me too. I uh, thank you very much for your attention. And uh, I'm logging out and uh, hand back to Antje. Thank you so much. That was that we we all, like we have seen this before, but I can assure you we have had so much fun already with this design at every retro that we do. Like we follow Scrum methodologies throughout uh, the full course, and uh, we usually have retros on on Fridays. And whenever Ingo was showing his nineties style Stephen King horror uh, UI, we like we always we always enjoy that a great deal. So thank thanks so much, Ingo. That was really cool. Uh, and we had on, I haven't seen any question. Let me know, um, maybe that's a shout out to my colleagues. If there's anything I'm missing, let me know if there's any question I should answer or we should hand over. But for now, we will hand over to a person who basically built three projects. Um, and this is Lawrence and he will tell you more what I meant with that comment. Hey everybody, thanks a lot, Antje. So my name is Lawrence, I'm from Vienna. I have an academic background in classical music as a trained orchestra conductor, but I always had that passion for analytical thinking, for problem solving riddles. So when I decided to make a career switch, it came natural to me to go into the direction of coding. And the project that I built um, is a customer support system for a fictional airline that is called Blue Jay. And as Antje already mentioned, it basically consists of three parts. The first part is a web app, the help desk app, where employees can get in touch with customers. It was written with Next.js. The second part is a mobile app written in React Native with Expo. That's where customers can send messages to airline staff. And the third part is the GraphQL API that holds everything together and which was actually the part that I enjoyed most writing. So let's now have a look at the project. I'm gonna share my screen.
Cool, okay, here we are. So this is now the deployed help desk web app. I have an employee, Jennifer, who has admin rights and she's going to sign in. Now she comes to the page where she sees all tickets. Those are the tickets that were issued by the various customers. And she can click on any one of those to see the correspondence with the customer, uh, interesting information, and she could also here perform actions. She can also filter the tickets in various ways. So maybe just see urgent tickets or select by category. And because Jennifer is an admin, she can go to the ticket reports page where she will see interesting information about, about all tickets issued in a certain time period that she can also adjust. Now we're gonna have a look at the mobile app. So what you're going to see is a projection of my smartphone to the computer with a customer, Max, who is going to sign in. And now here he can press on contact and then on message and issue a new message. So he decides to write a complaint with the title, this is a complaint. I'm angry to make it short. I'm angry. Okay, and send this. Now we can go back to the help desk app, go to the pending tickets, and we see that the new ticket shows up here, has the message from Max, and now Jennifer can respond with a simple why. Send this, but she's not so happy about this conversation with the strange customer. So um, she wants to assign it to her friend, Lisa, which she, which she can do over here. And now Lisa shows up here. And because Lisa is not an admin, she will see only the tickets assigned to her. Max, on the other hand, when he signs in again to the mobile app, presses contact, presses message and can see Jennifer's response. So thanks a lot, that's from me and giving back to Antje. Amazing, Lawrence, that was really impressive. Uh, I, would, I would love to just stand and complain and be like, I'm angry, <laughs> that's it, handle it, please deal with that, I'm just angry. Um, uh, but, but yeah, we, we're gonna move on and I'm, I'm really happy um, that the next person is actually here with us today because he was scheduled to have a knee surgery done uh, and fought off a whole team of doctors and was like, no, leave me alone. I have to leave. I have to, I have to go. I basically ran out of hospital because he was like, I have to attend the graduation event. I can't. You can cut me open any, any other day, but, uh, but not today. So the next person on our list is uh, Victor. Please, the stage is yours. We can't hear you. Sorry about that. Can no you hear me now? No yeah, worries, I'll, we can hear you now. Okay, just, I'll just I'll just share my screen. Yeah, go ahead. And uh, my name is Victor Ejikemosu, and I am from Nigeria. I am currently living in Gmunden in Oba, Australia. I have experience, past experience in uh, social media management, where I have I had the privilege to work with some farmers here in Oba, Australia. And uh, my last job is what gave me the inspiration for my project that you're about to see in a minute. But before then, I want to talk about the technologies I use, which is Next.js and Node.js for the front end and back end respect respectively. And I used Material UI for the uh, CSS. I used MongoDB for the database and I, I did the, the payment with PayPal. I deployed the, the project on Heroku and Vessel. And here I'm introducing you to Pure Farm, which is a multi-vendor marketplace for farmers where they can upload their, their farm produce in form of a food box. And buyers can come into this platform to, to buy the, the products. 
And let's say I'm a, I am a consumer and I come to this platform and I see, I, I couldn't see what I like here on this overview. I can click on the search and I want to buy like vegetables. It will be searched according to the food bus that has the category of vegetables. I can also decide to check through the name of farmers that I know. And if I see a product that I like from that farmer, I can click on it and see the detailed information about the products and see the diet type and the package type and the farmer's information. And then as a farmer, I'm going to, um, I can register as a customer or as a farmer, but because I, I, I want to show you all the privileges you have as a farmer and, a, and as a customer, I'm just going to log in with already created farmer's account that I have. And now I'm logged in and as a, as a farmer, I have the advantage of having this dashboard here, which is where I can manage my products online. And when I click on this product, I'll be redirected to all the products that I have. And I can decide that this product is no more on sale. So I just click on delete and do it away. And uh, I want to put a new product. So I click on create product and uh, the a sample product will be created. I'm just going to change these two values and upload a picture that I'm, I'm, I'm managing this picture from Cloudinary. And when the picture is uploaded, you can put other information, but because of time, I'm going to leave it out for now and just click update. And when you go to the market, which is where you see all the products, you can see the product that I just created um, right now. And when I am done, I can just um, decide to, to go here and click here and um, click on logout. And uh, <laughs> this is a quick run through of my projects. I, I have a lot of more functionalities, like I implemented the um, uh, PayPal payment, which is fully functional. There are a lot of cool things that I could show, but I just run through it because of time. So if you have, if you're interested and have need more information about me or this cool project and other projects that I have done, it is on my GitHub, which you can see the link there. And um, I thank you for listening. And I'm going to hand over back to Anjay. Thank you. Great job, Victor. I I I love that you that you put so much effort since since the past days into into keeping on time because Victor has so much functionality here. He had a hard time squeezing it into this time slot I granted him. And uh, yeah, great job. That was that was really really cool. Thank you for that. Thank I really you. enjoyed it. Um, uh, we, we're going to do a little switch of moods here because it's going to be a bit, little, little bit gloomy for the next uh, presentation because we have a person who likes some dark humor and dark games, which is fine. We embrace diversity. So we had fun with uh, the game that Philip built and uh, especially with his uh, unique skills when it comes to uh, writing, writing things and, and, and even coming up with some poetry when it comes to box and issues. <laughs> so that was, a, that was actually very entertaining. Have fun with the next project by Philip. Thank you, Ante. So my name is Philip Binder. I'm from, uh, from Vienna. And I'm just going to share my screen right now. So my project is called Dark Deeds. In this project, you're not playing like a good guy. But before I head straight into it, I just want to mention why I got into coding. And the reason why I got into coding is because I always enjoyed like analytical thinking and being creative. And I also wrote like little short stories before. And it was therefore clear for me that I wanted to go for a text-based game in my final project. And yeah, um, if you know like the board game, uh, I think it's board game Werewolf. They're like the players trying to convince, so, so they're werewolf players and human players. And the werewolf players are trying to convince the human players to kill the other human players. And this is kind of similar to this game, because in this game, you're trying to convince the other villagers to turn against the mayors and the background, just to keep it short, because time is of the essence here. Um, you're back in this village, you've been wronged in the past and they're out for, you, uh, for your wrench. So something I wanted to make sure my final project is to also reflect this, uh, this moody gameplay and this dark uh, approach in my design. So we can see over mm -hmm. here, like the colors are fading. <laughs> we are starting with, uh, with, with an orange color, going to red, dark red and black. And yeah, the first designs for this game were built in Figma and in Draw SQL. 
and the game itself is using um, React.js, Next.js, and um, yeah, also Postgres database and supported by uh, the npm package um, of uh, yeah npm package called um, Emotion. So let's head into this game. I already created like an account. We call it I call it Player One, and I uh, chose the most secure password ever. That being one two three four five six. Let's head begin. Uh, let's head in. Um, yeah, thing of this game um, that's was important to me is like mix dark humor with absurd humor. So if you're familiar with Monty Python, you will like this game. And right now we jump back uh, right into it. So the player clicks on one of these 10 numbers you just saw. These representing the villagers. And this is like the second villager. And all this dialogue is handwritten by me. And I'm just gonna read out the first part of here. <clears throat> the description. You walk up to the tallest towers in the village, eager to unleash the epiphany of rhetoric and demagogy. Bright words for dark deeds form naturally in your mind as you knock on the door with utter self-confidence. Dress to impress, deceive from his chief. The door opens and out steps a, man, a mountain of a man, barely fitting through the door frame, thanks to his huge size and the layers upon layers of muscles. The man frowns upon you, you, as, you as your confidence crumbles to ashes. You start sweating, panicking, and struggling for words. The villager says, great, another idiot in our village, this time even dressed like one, get lost. And now the player is presented with three options. Um, only one of them is correct, so you can either panic, fight, or run. When I presented this to my colleagues, they all wanted to fight, but I'm going to pick run. And there you have it. The game then checks um, how many answers you have already, uh, how many questions you have answered, and logs them in the database. And once you have given 10 answers, you're either directed to the you win page or you died page. And yeah, to point this one more time out, this is not a game where you're playing the good character. You're being evil, and therefore, even though, even though you won the game, it's a bad ending because you are evil and convinced them to turn against the mayoress. And yeah, this is like the you win page. And coming to an end about this game, um, yeah, there's a roadmap I developed in my head and also laid out on, on uh, some notes. Um, yeah, just to keep it short, the player is supposed to go on for more than one round, and I wanted to want to add multiple iterations. So with that, I had I hand back to Antje. Thank you, Philo. Loving it. I think you pointed it out, but I want to repeat again. He wrote all of the games um, of the games texts himself, and um, and so is very is very talented when it comes to that. We had a lot of fun with his uh, bug reports in our Slack workspace. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Ante. And, uh, and yeah, really amazing project. Thank, thank you for that. I just wanted to point out, since we're almost now at number nine, uh, and we'll keep that pace, it's not it's not going to be less entertaining for the rest of the bunch here. It's going to be really cool. And there's some really great projects to come still. I want you to um, please stay until the end because we, like, obviously, the coolest projects are last is not a good thing to say because obviously all the projects are cool, but... The last two ones are really are really enjoyable and really entertaining, and I think you should you should stick around for the for the next half as well. But now we'll hand over to a person who thought just learning throughout the bootcamp is not enough. I also want to teach people what I learned, and this is the project of France. Yeah, hello, welcome also from my side. As Antje already said, my name is Franz, and I'm based in Vienna. My original academic background is in philosophy, and I've worked in a variety of different fields, including IT management and politics. Let's move on now, though, from my personal details to my actual app. I will share my screen with you. So. You should now see my screen. Yeah, so the project I've been working on is called UX Pro. It's a, it's a web application that is fully responsive, as you can see, and is built with a, with a variety of different technologies, including Next.js, MongoDB, TypeScript, and tool, Redux Toolkit. So the purpose of the app in general is um, to improve a developer's UX skills. That means that they should get a better understanding of how to create applications that are not, that don't just work, but they're also intuitive, easy to use, and loved by users. 
Yeah, so the recommended way of using this app would be to um, log, uh, to create an account and log in afterwards. I've already done that for now, so we can skip this part. And yeah, once you have done this, the idea would be to click on topics where you're presented with a variety of topics that you can choose from. Let's just go uh, with the first one for now. And once you've clicked on it, you will be presented with a small text that tells you some um, really essential aspects about this topic in our case on uh, how to create accessible buttons. And yeah, then you basically would read through it and probably read through it again because it's a lot of information. And once you feel comfortable enough, you can also test your knowledge that you just gained in a little quiz. Quiz. Yeah. And the quiz, uh, basically um, consists um, of four possible questions um, and it is in the multiple choice format, which means that you can, um, that there could be either one, two, three, or four answers. With regard to the time slot, I will just do that for now, uh, do that uh, on, uh, first uh, on myself for now, because we don't have the time for that. But yeah, I will just pick some answers that are correct and also incorrect. So as you can see. And yeah, once you're like, feel um, that you are done with the quiz, you can just click on finish and then you will be presented with the results of your quiz. It will give you uh, detailed information on how you performed on the question overall and also if the individual answer you have selected was correct. Once you have um, yeah, done a quiz, you can also um, view it on the dashboard where you um, yeah, can um, click on it once you click on it, you will be presented on the one hand, um, um, yeah, about the status that not all questions were answered correctly last time when you attempted the quiz, which was today, of course, and then you can click on it again and it would just show the same thing as before. Yeah, um, some other functionalities also include that you can submit stuff. So for example, you think there is a really good idea that you want to submit, then you can just fill out this form and submit it. And I will just receive an email if I did that. And yeah, you can also of course go to the profile settings and change everything you want in there. It will be changed into all database. Of course, you can change your name, your email, your passports. And what is also new is that um, I deactivated that for now that you can show instructions, which means it's just um, telling you how to do the quiz. But since I've doing that on myself for now, I deactivated that before. Yeah, that's basically it from my side. Hope you enjoyed it. And yeah, it would be really nice if you got in contact with me. And with that, I will um, hand back to Antje. Awesome. Yeah, you got to be quick to reach out to Franz because this is definitely a feature and the person we would love to have on the team. We could just use this for ourselves and for level, but this basically counts for everyone here. Uh, also for the next person uh, who also built something that we could use, <laughs> like all of them, but, but we, you know, um, we will still present them to you because maybe you have a chance snatching them. Um, next person uh, is number 10 and this is Kalsang. Over to you, Kalsang. Yeah, hello everyone. My name is Kelsang. I'm from Tibet. I've been living in Austria for about five years. Uh, life here has been such a roller coaster from the very beginning, getting exposure to a totally different culture, language, technology. And yeah, these past years I've been learning the language, doing my compulsory schooling and also took some part-time jobs and voluntary works. Yeah, during that period, I got really fascinated about the digital products like websites and apps, how they were built, the design and the different functionality that I started learning coding through watching YouTube, reading books and websites, and later had the opportunity to join up level in order to pursue and build the set skill needed to become a web developer. So the final project that I'm going to present is called Nautic. Nautic is a desktop app which allows user at any duration of a video to create a time-based bookmark with custom notes. It could be later easily accessed with a press of a button, taking you straight to that part of the video with your notes on the side. So let me just, yeah, the first thing is you can register. So if I, I already have an account, so I'm just gonna quickly log in. When you log in, you are taken to this page. If you are a new user, there's a detailed guide to use Nautic 
since I'm here, I'm going to show you quickly. We go to the video page where you have the video list and also you can fit, get, you should, first of all, you get the new video. So I'm going to get the video URL from this video and you copy the link from the YouTube video and I paste it under the URL and I'm going to write the name secret German. Then I press enter, it gets entered in my under the video list. And when I click on it, it takes you to the bookmark page with the book with the, with the video on the left and the bookmarks will be created on the right. So as you go through the video, let me just mute that thing. And you find a very important thing that you want to bookmark. Simple thing is click the bookmark button down below here. When you click, it opens a bookmark form where you just write this the item or something like that. And you, my note, note. And when you save it, it gets saved to your database. So the cool thing is now when you're revisiting the video and you play it and you want to know where did I note that thing? And on our press or button here, you are sticking straight to that video. That's a very cool thing I, I, I know. And the next thing I also want to show you is like the delete function. You also, I already have this here some notes in here and you have the ability to also remove an item. Yeah, uh, the most challenging part of my video, my, my project was getting the nested dynamic routes, right? And also syncing the custom controls and no, no bookmarks with the video. And yeah, um, this app is uh, built with the uh, Next.js, Postgres and TypeScript and deployed it on Heroku and uh, the styling was done with emotion and material UI initial uh, initial designing and wireframing is done in Figma and the database schema is done in uh, Draw SQL and yeah I would like to thank each and everyone for your time and thank you Uplevel for giving me this opportunity to present and back to you Antia. Such an amazing presentation. Thank you so much. Great work. Really great work, Kalsang. That's awesome. So now you know, because we are recording this whole thing, you should have been notified when you joined the whole Zoom thing. Uh, the recording will be on YouTube probably by next week at the latest. So now you know if you want to take notes for every potential candidate for your team, this is the tool you need to use for that. Ah. Uh, Awesome. <laughs> I can't let you go, peeps. I can't let you go. Um, so the next person on my list um, has a very sweet background in uh, mixing ingredients and being creative and building something already, not with cold, but with dough as a pastry chef. But um, but she found her new her new passion in basically doing similar things, but creating digital products. And we're really excited to see what Andrea has to show. Andrea. Hello, everyone. And nice to see you all. Uh, I'm Andrea. I come from Spain. I came to Vienna a while ago to study and as anti state to work as a pastry chef. I found, like, I, I always had a big interest in programming. And this year, I decided to do the step and learn it. And I'm really happy I have done this. This has been an amazing journey. And... Yeah, I'm really happy to be able to share with you the project I have created. Uh, I want to mention, uh, aside of programming, two of my biggest passions are food. I think you guys understand and discovering new places. So my app is created around this. I have created an app with a map where you can save your favorite spots and share with your family and friends as well. They can see that, um, like you can, see the recommendations and try new places. So I'm going to share my screen now, one second. So I welcome you to Top Tip Map. Some of the technologies I use has been Next.js, TypeScript, Postgres for the database. Um, I use 3GS to like animate like something like the world here. So well, first of all, when you get to my application to you to be able to access you know the website, you will have to register or login. In this case, I already have an account made, so I will just log in. So this will take you to the main page. On the right side, you see the map with already a few spots marked. On the, 
on this side, you will see like these restaurants or places that I have personally choose that are already like my favorite top, like top five. How this works, you will, uh, recently you may have gone to a really nice place and you will like to share it with your friends. So we'll write down the name of a restaurant and when you write it down, it will be marked on the map. You will have the option to add it and this will appear on the list. As well, if you change your mind or you just decide you don't like the place, you can delete it and yeah, it's gone. What you can do as well is you can access to more information of the restaurant, just clicking on the list and you can see here there's some review, there's the address, the website and you have the option to write a review. You can see here that some friends has written about it. I personally found this the best pizzeria in Vienna. And I can just make a comment. So the comment is here. As I'm the creator of this comment, I have the option to edit or delete the comment. As well, I have a ra rating system in which I think this place is five out of five and I can put it and it will show me the average of the ratings given by me and my friends together. Um, this is the main thing of my website. Of course, I have a profile where I can, if I want, delete my account. So I want to delete and it will take me back to the main page. Um, that's all for me. I thank you very much for your attention. Uh, it's really nice to be here. And yeah, I give back to Antje. Great job. I hope we can use it soon when we are out of this lockdown again and maybe weather is a bit nicer or maybe not and it's coffee, uh, cozy to, to share some time in a, and spend some time in a cafe. All right. Uh, eight more people to go and we'll be quick and this is why I'm just straight directly handing over to someone who's also been always very just, you know, friendly and straight and going through the curriculum like an icebreaker. That's Aiden, never been stopped a single day and I'm really looking forward to your project. We can't hear you yet. Aiden, we can't hear you. Oh, hello. How are you? No, there you are. Now, my name is Aiden, Aiden Ryan. I come from Dublin, Ireland. I've been living in Vienna about 12 years where I worked in hospitality, mainly bars. Um, I've had an interest in web development and coding and blockchain. And I decided I'd like to, to learn more about it and, and to know more about it. And I also wanted to challenge myself and have a new challenge and a new experience. And through up levels, I, I, I got that experience. Uh, it was really amazing. So my project I'd like to show you is the wild geese. This is a bar that some friends of mine have and they were looking for a website to be made. So I decided to help them out. And it was nice to have a client experience to talk with them about what they wanted from the website and what they liked from the website. I built the website using Next.js. I also used TypeScript. The database was built with Postgres and styling done with CSS using Emotion. It's got your various pages here. We have a login that comes up. This is an admin login, which has an encrypted password with bcrypt. And when we log in, <laughs> to the sports admin page where you can update the weekly sports events so people know what games are on and if they like the game, they can come in to the bar and enjoy a few drinks and enjoy watching the game. So an example here, we're we'll putting in the date, the time and the match. So we have for the match, we have Austria versus Ireland. So we'll submit that. And we go back to the uh, sports and we see that it's available. And we know that the game is, is coming up. But it turns out that the game isn't actually happening. So we have to delete it because maybe people come in looking for a game that isn't on. So we delete it and log out. 
and then go back, check the sports page, and it's gone, and we go home. And that's my final project that I like to present to you. I want to thank everybody for taking their time to view my project, and I'd like to wish everybody a nice day. And I'd like to, I'd like also to wish everybody a happy Christmas. Back to you, Antje. No, you did the holiday greeting thing. Now everyone has to do it. <laughs> you started <laughs> it. <laughs> no, please, everyone, obviously, feel free. No, that's cool. Thank you so much, Aiden. Really cool, a really cool project. Um, and um, we'll move over to the next person because we don't have any time. And the next person has never had a single bad day on the curriculum, uh, on the full course, every day was at least an okay day, no bad days for this person. And this is Lucas, and I'm really excited to see your project. So, hi, my name is Lucas Basker, and welcome to my presentation. I'm gonna start sharing my screen. Um, about me, my name is Lucas Basker. In uh, 2006, I made my matura at Tate Lungergasse for Industrial and Mechanical Engineering, uh, where I learned uh, basics in coding in Ball and Pascal. My Matura project was in Visual Basic. Uh, after Matura, I studied for two semesters at TU Wien. Then I switched to International Business and Engineering at FH Technikum Wien. Uh, when I started at Technikum Wien, I also started working at the Wiener Städtische Insurance Company. And now my final project, it's Troike, uh, an item exchange platform where you can upload items, search for other items in your price range and start swapping them. And Troike is uh, Spanish for item exchange, if someone wants to know. My used technologies uh, were uh, Next.js, JavaScript, TypeScript, uh, PostgreSQL, Tailwind CSS, Jest and Cypress for testing, and GitHub is my repo and deployed on Heroku. The first step was uh, Figma, uh, chose colors, the button styles, and planned the sites and the routing. Uh, then I made the database uh, schema on draw SQL. And now a short video to register a new user and add a new item. Uh, the, it's a typical input form. Uh, the address input is with uh, Google Autocomplete, as we see here. And uh, add item is with uh, Cloudinary, the image. And down there we can change our price range. And now we switch and when the video finished, we switched to the live deployed version. Now with the item page here, we can start searching. Um, we put the price range on 10%. So that's all items between 45 and 55 euros there. It's a, uh, it's a random database query and maybe not a lot of items. So maybe we're going to see some items more or um, we know we don't want a PS4 game, maybe the golf clubs and yeah, maybe an espresso machine and maybe the scanner and all items we liked, uh, they come to the want list as we see here. And now we change users. And we, we see there are the three notifications. Uh, if we press there, there are the, not the trade notifications. Uh, we can say, yeah, maybe we delete this one. I don't want that. Let's say, yeah, we're gonna change the Game Boy with the Nespresso machine. We're gonna press on trade. And the goal set, we're gonna delete. Now the accepted trade moves to the trade overview. As we see here, the Nespresso machine, you confirmed the trade with Lucas uh, with, the old, uh, with the old Game Boy color. Uh, when we press uh, details there, it shows the item of the, uh, of the other user and the calculated middleway point when both users uh, put in the correct addresses. So the funny thing is between Neustiftgasse and Beatrixgasse, the middleway point is Burggarten and down there also a mail button. The site is also fully responsive as we see here and yeah. Thank you, and don't forget, uh, don't buy if you can swap. Great job, great job, Lucas. 
really really loving the idea i think some people uh mentioned already that they would love to look, love to use it um yeah and the next project is actually also something that someone at least one single person in the in the participant list here today in the zoom would love to uh, use i'm calling you out hamed one of our former graduates <laughs> because we coincidentally have someone on this cohort building your dream final project uh, to an extent that you can actually use it. So everyone's excited now and I am too. I'm really looking forward to Johanna's project. Hi guys, um, I'm Johanna. I'm originally a trained actor. So I worked in the arts and then evidently in all sorts of corporate jobs and office jobs. And then um, I always wanted to find something else that I could do, which is a bit more crisis proof. And um, I wasn't really interested in anything but acting. But then COVID came and had a really, really good space and time to think about it. And then I found coding and I love it. And um, I'm really passionate about it. And I'm equally passionate about something else still, which is um, dancing. And um, so I built... Um, pair up, which is um, essentially a Tinder for finding your dance partner, because in Vienna it's really hard if you don't have a spouse that loves dancing as well um, to actually match up with someone. So here's the starting page and then um, you can create an account. And I'm going to create an account for Daniel, who is a friend of mine who loves dancing and who has exactly that problem that he cannot find anyone to dance with. So he's got a number, which is important to be contacted. And then password. So I've signed him up now. And um, here he can choose, is he a follower or a leader? So he wants to be a leader. And um, he loves Charleston. But he also loves Viennese Waltz. He wants to learn that. And his preferred school is Swing Out because it's in the first district and it's awesome and central and also dance for fun because he wouldn't want to dance for fun. So he's committing his preferences and there are his matches. And then he thinks, ooh, they both sound nice and there are no pictures because it's not really Tinder and none of us is really superficial. And um, we just want to have a great time. So he chooses Ada because he thinks it's nice that she is um, using lower key for her name. And he wants to send her an email and he presses on it and then the yeah, email program pops up and then he can send it and everything is good. I'm not going to do that now. Um, and then um, I also used Bootstrap to um, really make it fully responsible. So this is um, how it would look like on an iPhone 6S, um, which is also, Pretty nice, I like that. And it's supposed to be a mobile app as well. So I'm logging somebody else in now. That takes a bit longer. And I'm logging in Michi. So he's, we'll have different matches. I've already registered him. Um, one second. And again. So he's got already preferences chosen previously. We don't need to go over that. And then we can go to my matches page and see what's happening. There's some more people and he wants to phone Beatrice. And there you could phone Beatrice, which I'm not going to do now because again, the number is made up. But um, that's my app and um, it's fully deployed. And my next step is I really want to make it available for the dancing community in Vienna. Um, and also the schools are all real and the dance, uh, the dance types are all real and I really want to make it work because it is a problem. And I love swing dancing and it took me forever to um, actually be able to do a course because you need a partner by, uh, at, at sign up and there you have it. I hope you'll all join once it's live, um, like really once it's usable on the app store. That's it for me. Good job, good job. I can't wait. I might get into dancing at some point, but if I would, I would use this app. <laughs> I would definitely also use uh, the next app. And I guess a lot of uh, a lot of us should 
because the next person came up with an idea that is super, super relevant nowadays and with, uh, with a lot of societal challenges and discussions going on, it's, it's more important uh, than ever to consider the idea that Jubran came up with and I'm really happy to hand over to him now. So the stage is yours. Hello everyone, uh, my name is Jubran and I'm from Syria. Uh, I used to study mathematics at the TU in Vienna. And uh, while studying mathematics, uh, I had my first experience with programming and um, I liked it a lot. Uh, I liked it to the point that I decided to drop out and pursue it as a career. And after some searching, I came across Upleveled and uh, as they say, the rest is history. So let me start sharing my screen right now. Okay, uh, so this is, uh, the app name is First your couple, and this is what you see when you first uh, log in, or actually even when you're not logged in, but now I am. And uh, First your couple is a platform where you can, uh, where users can read pairs of uh, articles on news reportings uh, from different sources, um, and these articles are displayed side by side. Um, the idea here is that uh, ideally we would have uh, an article from a left-wing news uh, source and the other one from a right-wing news source. So this is the home page. Um, here we have uh, an events card. There would be naturally more than just one, but now we have one. And the events card has a title. It has the headlines, the logos, and the author's name uh, from both uh, sources. And when we click on it, uh, we are really redirected to the event page, which is a dynamic page in Next.js. Uh, we scroll down a little bit and we have both articles next to each other. Um, users can uh, read uh, if they want to, they can scroll down and read. They, can, they also have the option of increasing or decreasing the font size uh, to their liking. And finally, they can scroll down to the comment section. Now, the special thing about this comment section is that you can only leave um, comments in a specific format. Uh, and this format is the format of a, uh, an argument where you have a conclusion and you have a premise to support your conclusion. So here I can leave a comment, um, I believe such and such, and I can add a premise and because as considering whatever, considering uh, the readings, for example. It means nothing at the moment, but you get the idea. So we leave the comments, it's added to the, uh, the rest uh, here. Um, I can edit my comment if I want to, and I can also report other comments. Uh, so um, for example, I would like to report this one. I can click on it. I can choose uh, of these, one of these uh, reasons. Of course, it's not good language, but yeah. And once I click done, um, I basically reported that comment. And this is actually the, um, the main uh, experience or most of the experience of the user. Now I can log out and I can log in as an admin. And I can, as an admin, I can deal with this report. I can see the comments. I can see how many times it has been reported and for what reason. And I can also see, uh, I have here the options I can re re delete the report uh, or the comments or both. So I'm going to delete this report. And finally, I also have the option as an admin to create uh, new events and publish them uh, to the website. And uh, that's it for me. Uh, thank you for listening. And I'll pass over back to Antje. Great job. Really great job. Thank you. This would create so many safe spaces on the internet if people would just follow some rules and, and have, a, uh, have a broader perspective and so on. So that's a really great idea and nicely done. Really cool. Um, we, for the next person, and we have one, two, three, four more people to come up. So we'll be fast. We're on time and I'm super, super happy about that. The next person is we have 
parents once and again in a while on our uh, on our cohorts and it's especially challenging for them we know that there have been other parents on this uh, on this cohort as well but depending on how much time you actually have to spend with your care work uh, that leaves little time for actually learning and working on your projects so i'm very very impressed with what ekaterina achieved uh, throughout uh, throughout her time in the boot camp and i'm handing over to her to show her project go ekaterina uh, hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Ekaterina Oino, and I have a background in tourism as um, a receptionist and in uh, guest management. I have always had interest in uh, programming, coding, but um, yeah, and when the opportunity showed up, I just um, grabbed it, so to say. Um, now I will uh, try and share my screen. Yeah, it should be functioning. Uh, yeah, I have uh, created a website uh, called Plant Your Future, um, which has the purpose of giving um, users with a desire uh, of planting trees. Um, it gives the opportunity to do that. So imagine that um, I am a, a random user and I go to the products, I see something interesting and I decide to plant like 20 saplings, I add it to the cart. Here I um, hmm, I think that I might want uh, something more. So I go back and I choose another five saplings. I add it to the cart. I go to the checkout and um, I will log in. Okay, so this is Anna at gmail.com and my password is also very original, just like Philips, I guess. Okay, and here I need to put a billing address. And this would be like Anna Banana. And the address is just street and we live in Vienna. And the postal code is, okay, yeah, in Austria, right? And from here, I will continue and I will go to the payment details and I will just put a credit card number. Uh, of course, it's not a real one and it expires. Okay, and then I go continue. And here I'm placing the order. All right, so I get a confirmation email and uh, then I just can go log out and go back. That's it. Uh, yeah, that's it from me and I'll Pass on back to you, Antje. Thank you so much. Great project, Look, looking really cool. Really, really like it. Great work there. And um, yeah, since we want to be on time and we want to have everyone on the call for our last three participants, because I can assure you it's awesome projects, like all the other 16 before. Uh, but can't wait to show you what Fana will build. And I'll just hand over to you, Fana. Hello everyone, so my name is Fanel and I will be your guide today. So I'm going to start sharing my screen and welcome to Oldiebot Goody. So Oldiebot Goody, it's an application that allows owners of old cars to share their beauties. I've built things my whole life as a welder. I'm leveled up and I build things with Next.js now. So I will go quickly through different sections. And after that, I'm going to create a new user because I really want to have full access to the, all the pages. So I'm going to create a user right now. So this is the user's page and we have two options to delete account and get started. Of course, we'll get started. So right now I'm going to introduce the data into database, a database created in PostgreSQL and using uh, API routes to pull the data from it. The, I used also the Cloudinary to host the pictures because are some of them. And of course the application is uh, deployed on Heroku so you can have a look and send me your feedback later or update your card. So let's go further. So on the left side, we have the available cars that are right now and the map that is displaying 
where the cars are located. And look what I found is the car that we inserted a few minutes ago. So it seems all fine to me. So I'm going to search for something new because after three intense months, I really want to have some fun for a couple of days. So let's see what uh, we are going to find it. So I'm going to pick one, uh, the other one, yeah, it looks nice. So I'm going to pick another date. Let's see, in general, I think I have time, so let's book it. I'm going to fill all the data. So the checkout is uh, with Stripe because today it's uh, very secure and the documentation is also great. So I'm processing. So the order was placed, but I think I uh, wrote something wrong. So I'm going to use the contact form that is created with SendGrid API. And just a second, so I will pass in the message, the summit. Great, so thank you, your message has been delivered. And also my application is mobile friendly, those days is supposed to be. So I'm going to go through different pages to see how it looks. So until now, I think it looks decent, so to say. I'll go back to the profile page because I really want to delete my account. And I will check if the data is gone because I don't want to be there after I'm not using the application anymore. So it seems like the car is gone. It's not here anymore. And it seems like I have a new email. So I will go to check it and it's here. The message, yeah, it's secure, the message that I wrote it earlier. So thank you for your time. So that is that was from my side. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. So back to Andrew. Crazy good design funnel. Really, really, really awesome. Looks looks extremely good on both the, the desktop version and the mobile version. Really. Thank you. I was very nervous. Oh, there's some people already <laughs> wanting to sign up. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you'll not have time in January because you need to work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. But, uh, but yeah, here it is. We are already down to our last two participants and uh, I'm always mentioning them together. They have two completely separate and two really awesome projects, uh, but they're kind of related with their topics. And the first one up is our beloved Elena, who not only um, who not only added a lot of uh, Italian passion to the boot camp and taught us all what to uh, do and not do with Italian food. There's lots of don'ts there. That's what what stuck with me. <laughs> but we had we had a lot of fun, especially because she's the queen of puns. Uh, doc related puns especially and you'll understand in a second what I mean with that. So the stage is yours, Elena. Um, thanks, Antje. Yeah, as you mentioned, my name is Elena Quazzoli and as you spoiled perfectly, I'm Italian and I prepare a little graphic recording of myself. Um, so yeah, in the past 10 years in Vienna, I've first been a project manager and then actually a certified Scrum Master, both in the tech and financial services industry. And while collaborating with great engineers and the great development teams I work with, at some point I was like, okay, I will take the leap. And I also want to be the one that build the things and make things work. And that's how my journey into development started. As also Antia spoiled, one of my main passions is dogs. Um, and also puns. And combining the two things, my final project came to life. And my final project is actually adoption. As you can see, this is the deployed version that I have on Heroku. And this platform is meant to solve two main problems that I faced when I was volunteering for shelters. One is that it's really difficult to find the right person for the right dog. And second of all is that shelters usually have to deal with a lot of pets and they struggle with funding. And so although people are not ready maybe for adoption, they can still support their dogs and the shelters with donations and by becoming ambassadors. One main thing of my project was to create a shelter admin for the shelters 
And in their dedicated area, the shelters are able to keep up to date their information to track which dogs they have available for adoption and also add new dogs. As we all feel not right now, I will add a dog that is a couch potato, um, it's pretty old, um, pretty heavy, low in energy, it's a male. And all these criteria will serve us then to find the right adopter for this dog. Also, I've implemented the upload of the images through Cloudinary. And once the dog is published, the shelter will be able to see it here. And also it will appear for all the users on the dog overview page. So if I go here now, the couch potato will be here. As I love puns, we will check now Ferdinand. And as you can see in the individual page, we can see the description of the dog and we are able to do three main things here. Favorite a dog, sponsor a dog or adopt a dog. But in order to do so, we have already to be part of the community. So I've created an adopter user. And as you can see here, I can finally favorite Ferdinand. Or if I would be ready for that, I could adopt already Ferdinand by starting the process with the shelter. Or if I'm not ready yet, I could still support him by buying food or toy supplies or um, veterinary checks, for example. Once I'm done with that, I will always find Ferdinand in my favorites. And on my profile page, I will always be able to track my donations for which shelters and which dogs. But most importantly, I'm able to save here my preferences for dogs. And so I would like to have an active dog, for example, to fit my lifestyle. And once I save these preferences, my dog overview page will be looking different than what it looked before for a non-logged in user. So as you can see, the adoption platform is already prompted me with possible matches that would fill my adopter uh, profile. So I will log up now and there are a lot of things that I would like to continue working on on this platform. I think it's really scalable. One of the things would be a chat between the shelters and the adopters. So the adoption process would be even smoother. But apart from that, um, all of this was possible in the implementation of this completely accessible platform and all the functionalities uh, through all of the skills that I learned um, at up level. So as you can see here, we learned backend technologies. I was able to use third party APIs, but most importantly, I discovered my passion for front end development, for accessible website and for clean UX and UI. A lot of features were not represented here, but you can find all the technical details on my repository on GitHub. And yeah, I'm handing over for the last project. Crazy good, Elena. That's such an awesome project. Like the, the design is awesome. And I, I love how you took care of, um, of matching the dog's um, temper to the like the couch potato thing and and uh, the energy of the dog uh, has to definitely match the the owner and this is this is really considerate and just a lovely project it's really cool but um owning a dog comes with responsibility and this is exactly what the next project is about and last not least a really really cool project that is slightly related in topic um i'll hand over to marco the stage is yours thank you Ante. So hello everyone, um, nice to meet you all. I am Marco, I'm 32 years old and I'm from Wiener Neustadt, but I'm living in Vienna for six years now. So for the last few years, I already worked in web development as a product owner. And that's also the time where I got really interested um, in the technical side of things. So eventually I decided that I want to build things myself and that I want to get into coding more seriously. But it was also a time uh, that I faced a problem that I'm sure many of us have to deal with on a more or less regular basis. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So I'm going to share my screen with you. So now, Imagine yourself getting up in the morning, you prepare yourself for a great day. You have a nice cup of coffee, you shower, you lace up your shoes, you leave the house with no bad intentions, and suddenly there it happens. You step into dog poop. So what's the solution to this? Let me show you dog poop, a mobile first progressive web app that lets you easily report dog poop on sidewalks. So how does it work? Dog poop is built with Next.js and React to provide a smooth user experience while maintaining high performance. 
It uses Tailwind CSS because of its component friendliness, while Google provides all necessary maps data via Google JavaScript places and static map APIs. To create an even more app-like experience, DocProof makes use of progressive web requirements, such as registering a service worker for caching different assets. From a user's perspective, it provides here with a default view of a list where we have all the recently reported poops sorted by recency. But you also have the possibility uh, to show all the reported poops on a big map. And if you click on one, it shows you a static map with all the details, including a description. So if you stumble into one someday, you can easily add one after you sign up or sign in, providing a username, email, and password. Everything handled with front end and back end validation and security. Just add a title, add a description and of course your address, either via the input field or you can use a current location via the browser API and save the day for a lot of people out there. If you want to have a look at all your reported poops later on, you can easily do this in your account page. So whatever your day is gonna look like, whatever you have planned, whatever is in front of you, always start your day with dog poop. And your day is gonna be a great day. So that's it from me. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. Um, I would love to hear from you and stay safe out there. Uh, back to Antje. Thank you so much, everyone. Like really, I'm, I'm super, super impressed. Thanks to all the participants for so many great uh, presentations. You all did a great job. The projects are great. The presentations were great. And I just want to love you. Uh, I want to love you. Yes, I also want to love you. I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart and from the whole up-level team. Like we we are definitely always in love with our, with our students. Uh, you might feel that. It's a very emotional roller coaster, and we're very close to our to our students. So this uh, these things can happen. Uh, I also want to hit this button. And I also want to thank everyone from the employer side and uh, the guest lecturers who also joined us today, everyone who's over on Twitch, everyone uh, in the Zoom session for sticking around so long and for for paying attention and and giving the the attention to all the to all the graduate presentations i think people are really really happy that you're still around but we're also quite well with our timing this time right and so if there i i guess i could answer one or two questions uh but what we'll also do today is um we will we will now close this session uh, soon, like in the next minutes, and move over to uh, our personal Zoom, like my personal Zoom, some people know, <laughs> and then we will have a little after party and relax a little bit and just be proud and happy about what everyone achieved and also um, uh, have a look at our certificates and the reports um, that, that we generate for our people and just uh, in general be happy about what everyone achieved. Yes, I guess. As I mentioned before, if you now found probably not only one, but several people that you fell in love with and you're like, this would be the perfect match for our team and at least we at least would like to talk to this person. Because obviously, as I said in the beginning, but I'm repeating now again, people could only show like a fraction of what they built throughout uh, the course and what, what, their, what their background is, what their strengths are, what their skills are please take the time to get to know them because this is just a teaser. This is just an appetizer and take the time to have a look at their profiles uh, on Fusion, which is where you register to, to enter the Zoom today, uh, which is also where you will find um, where you will find the, the people's profiles and their contact details to reach out to them. So this is something I can only encourage you to do because a conversation will definitely um, uh, get you, tell you more about whether this person is a good fit for you or not. And, um, and apart from that, uh, yeah, please let us know if you have any questions afterwards. You have, or you can either contact me or also Matthias, who's probably your main contact. He will be more than happy to, 
uh, to share uh, what 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 else is part of our program, uh, who's in the next cohorts, um, when are the next cohorts, how to sponsor us, how to join us, how to get your employees up leveled with us, how to hire from us, all these kind of things, and um, and this is something that you could ask him uh, afterwards. And make sure to follow us on our social media. We're basically mm, not everywhere because there's so many social media channels, but the most interesting ones are probably Instagram for all the cool um, insights into what we do in the bootcamp and also LinkedIn uh, for keeping in touch with, with what's relevant for you uh, from an employer perspective. That's it. I'm, I'm super thrilled. I'm super excited. I'll probably need a drink now. And I'm so looking forward to say congratulations in a more personal stage uh, over with the, with the graduates. Have a great day, everyone. Stay safe out there and enjoy your holiday season too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye and see you next time. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.